The former interim APC national chairman, B.C. Akonde, has condemned separatist agitations and hate speeches and encouraged those indulging in such to desist from henceforth. He also condemned speeches by public figures that could trigger divisions. The government at all levels, security agencies and public leaders across the country were admonished to do all to prevent tension so that national security challenges could be solved. Well, joining me to discuss this is Dayo Kayade, a political technocrat, and Mark Adibayo, a political affairs analyst. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Good evening. Thanks for having me. Great. Um, I'm going to start with you, um, Mr. Dayo Kayade, because recently um, I did see that you had a forum where um, you talked about issues that are affecting the polity. And I'm wondering um, why you decided to bring people together to have that conversation. Was it as a result of the um, phase that the country is going through and the insecurity and the politicization of everything that's been happening recently? Yeah, you see, yeah. Uh, thank you for coming out with this question. It is true that um, we had uh, a southern Nigeria providing, and uh, where we discussed the issues affecting our country on, on Thursday last week at the uh, Jogger Center in Bado. What we are saying is this it is now time to heal our country rather than talking about uh, issues that we keep on dividing us. We have been on this for a very long time. We have been on this for years in memoriam. We have been on this for ages. And it is time for us to start healing our nation. It is not about, uh, about uh, blame game. It is not about this is what this person has done. It is not about this is what that person has done. But it is about time to talk about what are the real issues and how do we resolve our differences. But how many people are ready to have that conversation? Because I just finished having a conversation with um, security I experts and they're all see. saying the same thing. These politicians, these so-called leaders know what the problem is and they obviously know what the solution is, but they refuse one way or the other to deal with the crux of the matter Instead, it's being politicized across different regions. So really, as much as I adore the fact that you're saying it's time for us to heal, who's ready to say this is the problem? Yeah. It is a pity. We, the people who have not really recognized who are who are supposed to talk about the problems. It is a pity. We, the people, have not realized who are who are supposed to talk about solutions? When you leave it for the for the government, there will be any kind of impetus that will continue to perpetuate their hegemonic tendencies on the people. But when the people discuss their problems themselves and come about the solutions, they come about with solutions that will solve the problems affecting them. Without looking at the political tendencies, look at this. In 2015, the PDP, they had uh, uh, a conference. But the MPC refused to accept it because of what we call party rivalry. Even when the MPC came in, they set up another war against the Eurofine. But still, they did not accept it because we didn't even let PC. People are justly to hold the, 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 the heart of the party. They are looking at if they should eat. They they so what Erufai said, Erufai will hold the, the, the heart of the party. So to that extent, not to see the people themselves come up with where the shoe pitch is best, we can't get to anywhere. Okay. It is not left of government. Okay. To allow an enabling environment for the people to discuss their problems themselves and okay. to come up with acceptable solutions All before right. we can get out of the doodle that we are.
in Nigeria. All right, let me go to Mr. Mark Adebayo. Um, I'd like to quote what uh, Chief B.C. Akande said uh, at that uh, meeting. Uh, he said, we restate our abhorrence of violence as a means to achieve either political or economic power and influence. Um, but he says um, that this is not what the APC stands for. But I'd like to, please correct me if I'm wrong, this, there has been a pattern where when people are tired or people are protesting against the government for one reason or the other, there's always a group that comes to protest for the government or there's a group of thugs that comes to scatter that protest and make it turn violent. So this is an approach that we've seen over and over under this administration. And I, I mean, I, I hate to do this and sound like a broken record, but look at what happened last year during the NSAS protest. Look at what happened in Kaduna State recently during the uh, NLC protest where thugs were hired. Uh, and these are, this is also an APC state. So really, what this APC chieftain is saying in one breath is that they abhor it. But when, what we see in action is the same thing that they're saying that they do not believe in or they do not um, welcome. So really, what should we believe here, sir? Well, uh, thank you so much. You see, there's a difference between intention and action. Um, it is, uh, I think it's high time the government of the day realized, especially at the state level, that you cannot be fighting against the people. You know, you cannot be fighting against the people. If people have genuine reasons for, for protesting, you know, the idea of sponsoring, uh, of sponsoring talks and miscreants to go and attack them is totally uncalled for. I have been an activist. I've participated in, uh, in protests. I have organized protests and uh, I've organized rallies. I've orga so I've, I've been part of rallies, you know, for all, all these things. So, but it, when you are out there fighting for a just cause, and suddenly miscreants come out to try to hijack this, the, the, I know, the protest, it is, it is inhuman. It is uncalled for. It is antisocial. And I think. Uh, you know, it's something that we really have to condemn in all this entirety. But the issue, uh, I think that there are two uh, sides to this issue. At times, it's not, it's, it's not always that the government sponsors uh, miscreants to go and attack, to go and attack protesters. Oftentimes, these antisocial elements just want to hijack the process for their own evil criminal tendencies. That is all they are after. What they can get that day, who they can rob, who they can rape, what they, who they, you know, that is just the kind of antisocial behavior that is inherent in them. It may not be always that government will sponsor them, but a situation where a governor has said that's threatened, that don't come to my state, if you come to my state, I'm going to attack you, and then if you see talks, definitely that governor should be held responsible. As for me, it is probably not about uh, political parties, you see, because what, what, even when PDP was in power, when there was this uh, massive uh, protest against uh, against uh, increase in the uh, increment in the in the in the pound price of fuel, you saw we saw what happened at Toyota. We are soldiers were unleashed on the people, you know. So it is not about what is the difference between the two, these two parties. Uh, what 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 exactly are the, is the difference between them? Well, that's so a big it, question. It is about the actions of, of the political actors. As far as I'm concerned, the complex Nigerian question has to be resolved in a way that. People with common sense and intelligence and patriotism must come together and find a peaceful means to resolve our issues. We cannot be talking at cross purposes, attacking one another on the basis of religion or ethnicity and believe that we are going to resolve the issues of this country. I am a great advocate for a, for, for a national conference of a peace of a peace conference. Mm -hmm. We have we can sit down and renegotiate Nigeria and redefine our, our relationship and talk about how this country can move forward. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, to, I'm sorry to sound like a naysayer, Mr. Deboye, but um, what have we done with all the national conferences that we've had uh, and all the uh, blue papers or the white papers that we came up with? Where are they? Some of them are sitting somewhere and gathering dust. Why do another one and spend taxpayers' monies if we haven't even taken a look at the others that we spent monies to also have? Well, you see, look, uh, we, the, there is no political will to move this country in the right direction. 
there's no, if there's a political will, you see that it's, it's, it's not there's nothing. It is not. Uh, it is not. Uh, it is not something esoteric to, to be able to find solution to the issues of this country. If there's a political will, if there's political will, we'll be able to move in the right, in the right direction. What we lack is the political will to do the right thing. You understand me? Okay. So we need to find. You need to find the the the, the means to have people of political will who can handle. That is why some of us are advocating for you know the, the, the kind of restructuring the leadership of the country to, towards the younger generation of leaders. You know, towards the younger. It's, it's like the current crop of old leaders have run out of ideas. So let us give the youth the opportunity. Let us give the younger generation the opportunity. Let us give those the younger generations who have had experience in governance to come and lead this country so that they can find solution to the to, to, to the myriads of problems of this country. Okay. There's no political win. We need younger generation with fresh blood, with fresh energy, with determination, with focus, with patriotism to resolve the issues of this country. Well, we the do have population. young people in our politics, and <laughs> I don't want to name names, but let me go back to Mr. Diokade because we're almost out of time. Let's talk about godfatherism in politics because he just made, Mr. Deboye just made mention of the fact that we need to restructure. Mr. Debayo, I beg your pardon, just made mention of the fact that we need to push aside the people, the crop of politicians that we have now, and, you know, turn our attention to young people. But then the leader of the APC in the Southwest, um, Bola Tinubu, uh, spoke on the issue of godfatherism. He openly said that he did not have a choice candidate for the upcoming local government elections in um, um, Lagos State. He said he, he didn't have a favorite candidate and whoever was suitable to run should run. And if they emerge winner, of course, it would be um, something that they did um, of their own accord and not necessarily that somebody put them there. But we would just want to take a look at that video quickly. And then when I come back, I'll just have your say on that issue and um, how we can get rid of godfatherism, really, if we can in Nigeria. Let's take a look. I have received numerous phone calls and inquiries by people near and far that have uh, uh, asked some people not to contest or to withdraw. That's far from the truth. Every one of you Lagosians who are members of APC, you have the right to participate in the local government as long as you are a registered member of our party. Nobody is my favorite candidate. All right, I'm coming back to you, Mr. Debayo, quickly in a few minutes, or uh, in a minute. What, what's your take on this video? I do not believe uh, what Ashwa just said. I really don't believe at all. I mean, I, I'm taking it with a pinch of salt. I don't think, I don't think anybody will, will win anything in Lagos State, especially from the from his party APC, without his endorsement, without his express endorsement, I doubt it. And if that is... It's happening. Then it's a new day. It's a new day for for Lagos politics. It's a new day for Nigerian politics. But sincerely, I do not believe uh, the issue of Godfatherism has ended in Lagos. No, I don't believe. I don't believe so. Okay. Well, on that note, thank you very much, uh, Mark Adebayo, uh, for being part of the conversation, and Daya Kayade. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being here. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break now and listen to what Nigerians have to say about President Buhari criticizing the ban on open grazing. And when we return, I will give you my take. Um, the most important thing is that he is saying that they have not given any solution. But uh, for him, he's thinking that the solution he has given is actually better. There are other solutions that, that could have been given. For instance, uh, there is ranching. They, they can actually make up a, a particular place where those cows can be staying. And it will actually not um, obstruct anything that has to do with life. I feel it's the president. He has the right to do whatever he wants to do. But what is right is still right, regardless of his choice. Life is the most important thing. If they made those decisions because they want to save life, I think that would be the best place to look at. Now, um, as, what I'll say about that president, 
For now, I will say, we should just pray for him. Why would you say open grazing for every... It, it is not done. If it's in the north, let it be in the north. These people, they are carrying AK-47s. And you tell me you are rearing cattle. How does that work for Nigerians? It doesn't. Uh, kudos to our 17 state governors. They have actually shown to Nigeria that they are waking up. With all that is happening in the country, Mr. President is still saying it's an open show. Mr. President should please think well. Here's my take, a very short one. If our leaders claim that they want to do what's best and what's right and in the interest of us, the average people, the people that they govern, and yet we see them in another breath politicizing the issues that should be addressed, then where does that leave us? Because we are the ones who are losing family members, we're the ones who are being kidnapped, we're the ones who um, are being robbed, we're the ones who are losing people every day. Where's the value that our leaders place on human life, not even property? Us, the Nigerian, we're supposed to be valuable to them, but where is that value that they place on us? Is it that selfish of our leaders that they would only be worried about the next thing or the next position or how their political um, you know, people would look at them and the positions that they take. What about us? Those people that they come to to ask for the vote, those people that they swore to lead. So Mr. President, Mr. Governor, Mr. Senator, whatever you're doing should be for us, the Nigerian. We should be number one on your priority list. Let's stop politicizing the issue of insecurity and do what's right by the average Nigerian. I am Mary Anacle. Thank you for watching.